the expectation of privacy and just my WhatsApp, just between Chloe and me. It's, I can't expect it to be private anymore. That said, under Rika, I still have an expectation of privacy. Uh, if she does screenshot it and it goes viral and suddenly I'm sued or I land up at the Human Rights Commission or I lose my job, I can sue her for infringing my privacy. She has infringed my privacy. That doesn't mean that the legal consequences that result as a as a result of the content um, can't be enforced against me. So if I send you a message saying my boss is a dick, I hate him, and you screenshot it and you send it to my boss, I can still be fired. I can sue you for infringing my privacy, but I can still be fired. And that's the issue. That's why we've got to be so careful about putting stuff in digital format, because you lose control over it. Go to a park, say it to your friend's face, and make sure they're not recording. <laughs>
you know, Facebook doesn't have a presence in South Africa, Twitter doesn't have a presence in South Africa, it's very difficult to hold them to account. There's no question that they're publishing. Yeah, they're innocent disseminators until you inform them. But when you inform them, there has to be a duty on those companies to start taking responsibility for what they're publishing. And the only time that we've seen, I mean, Facebook released this statement last year when all the advertisers said they were going to stop advertising because their pictures were, their, adver their adverts were appearing right next door to like women violence and horrible, co completely objectionable content. And they, they released a statement saying we're going to get a whole lot stricter about, um, about what we allow to be published on our platform. I haven't seen it. <laughs> so I think that's where the answer lies, is holding the platforms like Google, uh, like Facebook, like Twitter, a, bit, a lot more accountable. And of course it's difficult. You know, in Instagram they do respond. I just had a child sex, a sexting case where they had sent pictures of their penises to somebody they thought was a girl at the next door school, and then they tweeted all these pictures with the boy's name and the pictures and their faces in it. If you ever take pictures of yourself naked, firstly, don't. <laughs> if you ever think it's a good idea to take a picture of yourself naked, hit, your, hit yourself on the head hard. Um, if you still think it's a good idea, make sure your face and your genitals aren't in the same picture. Um, because then at least when it lands up online, because it will, um, you can escape some of the reputational harm. Um, so, so in that case, clearly child pornography, you know, Twitter, we reported it, the account was shut down, but there was a six-hour lag during which time everyone takes screenshots. So, so there is always a lag, but yeah, I think that's where the solution lies. The law is that content is published where it is viewed. That's the jurisdiction that can hear a matter. So it's global. So what we upload here in this room is potentially accessible in 600 different legal jurisdictions around the world. Um, but of course, not all courts will hear a matter against you unless they can enforce the court order. That's certainly the approach of the South African courts. Um, it doesn't matter where the servers are. No, you don't have to prove account ownership. You, so, so we talk about publication. So, so the famous trans-jurisdictional case was the case of Cairns versus Modi. Cairns based in New Zealand, Christopher Cairns, a cricketer, um, sued Lalit Modi in India, founder of the IPL, um, who's based in India, got tens of thousands of followers in India. Um, he tweeted, Keynes' name has been removed from the IPL auction list because of his history of involvement in match fixing. Um, Keynes, based in New Zealand, sues Modi, Modi, based in India, in England, where they agree between the parties that he has 65 followers. That's it. He only has 65 followers in the whole of the jurisdiction of England and Wales, but that's enough to found the jurisdiction. Modi also had children who went to school in England, so he had an apartment in London. So you've got to have some kind of presence in a place to be held accountable there. Um, there are exceptions. You know, the French courts heard cases against Yahoo and uh, handed down very strict court orders against Yahoo, even though they didn't exist there. But they also knew that if a director from Yahoo landed in France, they'd be arrested. It's irrelevant where the servers are based. It's where the publication takes place. Absolutely irrelevant where the service takes place. We had it confirmed in the South African court in the Pigs Peak Casino case, where Pigs Peak said, oh no, we don't offer online casinos in South Africa. Our servers are in Swaziland. We're not doing it in South Africa. The court wasn't interested in that argument. They're not interested. Publication takes place where the content is viewed. Uh, Dow Jones has been held accountable in Australia for publishing an online magazine. And they were like, but our company's in, Aust in, in New York. Uh, our servers are in New York. The journalists are in New York. Still found guilty in, in Australia and held accountable.